Hi all, this is Nikun Shah from HP Aruba Networking's WLAN TME team and this is going to be the second video in the series Simple and Secure Networking. In the first video, we saw how to get your first branch gateway up within minutes from scratch and in this video, we will add a second branch gateway to the network and see how clustering works. So at this point, I have this one branch gateway running and the config we did in the first video works great if you just have one branch gateway at your branch. Now, we will make some changes to the first device if we want to add a second one to have proper consistency. As we see, we have all the dot ones on the interfaces on this first branch gateway. But when we add a second gateway, it might create some confusion. So just to have clean and logical config, we'll move all the dot ones as the virtual IPs and give dot twos for this first branch gateway. We'll also change this one on the second VLAN and give 172.16.200.2 here. Now, it's time to deploy the second branch gateway. I've already added the device in my GreenLake account and subscribed it. Begin by pre-provisioning it to the already configured group here. After this, let me assign it to the same site as the first branch gateway since we are going to use automatic site-based clustering. Separately, this could also easily be done in Aruba Installer phone app if you are using one. It's time to power on the device and connect port 003 to the uplink router. Till the time my device comes up, I'll start configuring my device level parameters. Begin by giving interface IPs for my LAN side VLANs as .3s and enable the DHCP here. Now, since both these gateways are part of the same cluster, they will do DHCP state synchronization. So we should configure the exact same scope on both the sides. Provide the interface IP for the second VLAN and enable DHCP settings, same as the first one. We'll give the default router as dot one, which we will configure in the next steps. Next, provide the system IP by selecting VLAN 100 over here. And finally, give a host name, which is similar to the first one out here. This will bring up the second branch gateway, but we still need to configure clustering config. For that, navigate to redundancy and cluster. Here, we'll select branch gateway one as the preferred cluster leader, or you could also select the second branch gateway. This will enable all my primary tunnels and traffic to the first branch gateway and branch gateway one will be the virtual IP holder. Now we will define our two virtual router IPs for the two LAN side VLANs. As we see that as soon as I select VLAN 100, it auto populates the IP addresses on local and peer provide dot one as cluster VIP. We can turn on cluster management for this VLAN. This ensures that this VLAN acts as the source of authentications coming from the cluster. Similarly, add the second VLAN VIP details here. Now the good part about this config is that it is only needed to be done on one device. And as we can see, the same config is pushed to the second device automatically, thereby reducing time and steps for configuration. By default, the devices communicating on VLAN 100 would be put in the logon role. So we need to make sure we change this to authenticated so that it will set basic permissions for the devices to communicate for clustering. That can be done on the group level config under policies, then under roles, we can create a new role assignment for VLAN 100 and set the initial role as authenticated like this. Now for clustering to work correctly, we need to have a communication path for the two branch gateways to talk to each other on the LAN side where the system IP VLAN resides. So at this point, we will introduce a switch and now connect ports 000 from both the branch gateways to it. 
For the switch side config, I've configured the two ports connecting the branch gateways with untagged VLAN as 100 and tagged VLAN as 200 and enable DHCP on VLAN 100 for the switch to receive its IP from the branch gateway. As we can see that my first branch gateway is showing offline on central. This is because of the spanning tree. As good practice, we should disable spanning tree on our WAN side ports. We could do this on the group level config so that it gets pushed to both the devices. And for this one config, we need to go to the advanced mode. In a couple of minutes, the cluster should form automatically. And we can verify this by going to clusters, selecting the cluster, and then gateways. The main thing to check here is the role for both the gateways. If we see leader and member here, that means our cluster has formed correctly. Although not mandatory, you can also verify this cluster membership on branch gateway CLI, accessing it through the useful central tool where you can remote console into the device. We'll provide the username and password that was set on the group and issue this show LC cluster group membership command. This leader and member here tells me that the cluster has formed correctly. VIP details could be optionally checked using show VRRP command like this. That concludes our second video where we saw how to add a second branch gateway or firewall and how automatic site-based clustering works. In the next video, we will see how to protect your branch by having security policies in place and how IDS IPS engine can be leveraged to further safeguard your branch. See you in the next one.